Hi everyone, Massimo here from the Blue Root team. And today I want to talk about Zoho Desk. I'm starting a series here of how to set up Zoho Desk. And in today's video, we're going to go through the basics, how to set up a department, all the settings, the general settings, the company settings that you should keep in mind, business settings, things like that. And then lastly, just in general, um, personalization for you or your users. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe. We love hearing from our subscribers and join our office hours. This is something where I get to meet subscribers. I get to help you. We can meet face to face. You can ask any question that's on your mind. They're a lot of fun. Enjoy the video. Alright, so let's get into it. So when you first log into Zoho Desk, what I would recommend you do is in the top right, there's a little gear icon. So that's the setup, and this is where you're going to spend a lot of time in these first couple videos I make. I'm, I'm going to spend a lot of time back here. And if you set this up properly the first time, it's going to save you a ton of uh, pain, for lack of a better word, in the future. So when I get back here, you'll see this page. And so where I want to start is, it's pretty simple, on the company. Tab. So under general, you're going to go ahead and hit company. So now when you're here, there's a few things you can do. Number one, you can upload your logo. You can change the name of the company and the primary contact locale, etc. So you can do that by hitting edit in the top right. I always recommend naming it something. This will show up in certain areas of your CR uh, of Zoho desk when you open up a portal and things of that nature. So name it something you're OK with others seeing. So I'm going to say Massimo's YouTube company, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Um, I'm gonna put the employee count if I want, the phone, the website, all of this is very important. Probably the most important thing on this page is the primary contact. So if you're one of the users that is not supposed to be the super admin for the nomenclature, please change it here. This can affect things down the line, billing and setup and stuff like that. So make sure it's the right person. So you're gonna hit save. That's simple, easy to do. I'm gonna go ahead and hit settings again. That's number one you should always do. Number two that I tell people to do is set up your business hours. This is important as you start getting into tickets and in later videos, I'm gonna show how this all works, but I'd recommend setting this up early on. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit add. And so you have a few options here and this comes into play with your live chat and even answering support tickets. You can escalate things or send out certain responses based on the business hours, right? So I'm gonna say normal business hours and I'm gonna go specific. We don't work all day every day, right? And so you can click and drag this to your liking. So you could do nine to five every day and it will adjust that. You can also customize it on a per day basis, right? So now I'm gonna hit save. One of the neat things you'll notice here is you can have multiple business hours and this will come into play as you have more than one department. You can set a business hour for a specific department. For now in this video, I'm just gonna show you how to create one. That's exactly how you do it. So that's kind of step two. You can hover over it at any time. You can turn it on and off. So if you all of a sudden have different business hours, you can turn this off and turn new ones on. So now the other piece I tell people to customize is general settings. So when I go back here, there's a bunch of things or a few things that you should keep in mind. So keep in mind, if you only have one department, it's going to show it here. If you have more than one, you have to do this for each of them, right? And so I haven't shown you how to create departments yet. I will in a second. But when you come back here in general, settings, there's a few things that I want to explain to you. Number one, the first one, allow CC on tickets. So this CC feature enables your agents and end users to add additional requesters on a ticket. This is something that tread lightly on, I guess. It's something that some of our clients are using, but essentially what it can do, it explains it here is agents can add other e others in email replies and add tickets through that. Right? So end users can CC someone and it can create a ticket and they can be on that ticket. That's something you want to proceed with caution on. And send as emails. Agents can send outbound emails to newer existing contacts, convert them into tickets and track their progress. Besides such contacts, do not receive a new ticket notification. So this is something you're going to want to learn more on. Again, not used heavily, but the, these are two settings you should take a look at at the very least. So now we're going to hit settings again. I also recommend everyone look at their personal settings. So this is you, the individual, right? And I'll go over user settings and stuff, but name yourself, uh, make sure your email is correct and make sure you're in the right departments. Now, if you're not an admin user, you're not going to see all these departments. Admin users, I'll show how to actually customize that. There are a few more settings in here. If you hit more, you can put what they're an expert on. This comes in handy as you kind of grow your support department. You can have experts and things like that. Country, time zone, and then teams, which I'll talk about in later videos. So go ahead and customize this information. 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to hop into departments. So this is an area that you can create multiple of. And technically speaking, you can create infinite departments. Most people just create a few and a department, think of it like a different business unit. So you might have a billing department that receives bills and you might have a sales department that receives quotes and a support department that receives questions or support queries, right? And so when you go to create a department, you just simply do, you click the button up here and what it'll show is something like this. It'll go through a bunch of stuff that I'll go through in separate videos, but the, the main name of the game here is you should set up at the very least in your first initial setup, all of the departments that you think you'll be using internally. Don't worry so much about these emails. I'm going to go through them in the next video, but feel free to add a friendly name and you can do some of the general settings here as well. Goal here, create multiple departments for all of your business units. I'll go over emails in and emails out and chat in other videos. So now that you've gone ahead and created some departments, the last step I want to cover in this video is agents, right? So now that you have departments, you might want to assign certain agents to certain departments. So those are basically users. It's a fancier term in Zoho Desk. So that's under users and control. In this system, I only have one, but if you were to add a new agent, you would go ahead here. Zoho would actually make you add a new subscription if you don't already have someone. So you have to invite them just like you would. And we have videos on how to invite people in Zoho One, but you'd invite them. It would be a paid account basically. And when you add a user, you have some options here, right? So when you actually go to edit them, it looks like the personal page, but you as an admin can actually determine what departments they're allowed to be in. So if I click here, for example, if I get rid of this department, now I click here, here's that department, right? And so the reason for this is some users are only billing agents, right? And not support people. So it's very important to get this right. Add all of the users to the correct departments. And lastly, while you're doing that, you should also keep in mind permissions. This is something if I click on CEO, for example, you could see all of the people here. So as you're adding users, you do actually have to add the permissions for them. You can add new roles if you'd like. And when I go ahead and hit new role, it'll ask, okay, what's the role and who does it report to? This is for permission sharing, right? Or ticket sharing. So you might have certain people that you don't necessarily want to have permissions that other people have. So those are probably the few big things that you're gonna add from day one. It's company settings, some personal settings, departments, and then also agents. Once you do that, I'm gonna walk you through some of the next steps on permissioning and email templates and all that fun stuff. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe. We love hearing from people. Please also come to our office hours. There'll be a link below. I love meeting people, helping them through all of their Zoho queries. And lastly, have a great day.